Hello, this video will introduce you to the BIM framework. So what is the BIM framework um, and why are we generating all these videos and putting them on YouTube? Um, so hopefully this uh, short video will introduce you to the basic principles, the goals and uh, what we're trying to achieve through this. So first, what is the BIM framework? The BIM framework is a, is, a, is a research effort, it's ongoing, it's started a while back and the intention here is to, to improve the performance of individuals and organizations and how, how, how we intend to do that is through something called knowledge engineering and knowledge sharing. So really the focus here is on knowledge, it's not on technology or anything like that. The BIM framework started as uh, my doctoral thesis at the University of Newcastle in New South Wales here in Australia. Uh, which started uh, 2005 and finished uh, 2013. But it has been extended uh, over these years and continued beyond that and will hopefully continue to be extended over the uh, next few years. And um, it has been adopted by a number of researchers uh, and used to, to develop a certain number of tools and templates uh, and new models, etc. So, why, why really do we need a BIM framework and why do we focus on BIM? Why don't we just do a framework about construction innovation or construction technology? Well, BIM to me as if you've uh, watched the video uh, about the BIM definition, um, BIM really is the current expression of construction industry innovation. So it's currently uh, represents um, the industry's innovation as a term and that's why the BIM framework is a BIM framework. Um, in the future, when BIM term is replaced by another term, the BIM framework will still exist with some changes in terms because we use BIM to, to describe all technologies, processes, and policies within the construction industry. So please keep this in mind when we're discussing a BIM framework. We're really discussing a framework about construction innovation, but we use BIM because it has its own certain um, uh, principles, certain terminologies that we all now understand or, or we're hoping to understand. So in order to benefit from BIM, uh, what we really need to do is to first understand what BIM is, and hopefully this is a, a, an effort towards that to help all of us understand it a bit better. And then apply this understanding to improve our own uh, competency, our collective performance, so then our individual competency, the capability of organizations, project teams, etc. And then, so after we understand and apply, we need also to measure our performance to see if we've improved or we haven't improved. And if we haven't improved, what should we do to improve? So how would the, the BIM framework achieve its goals? The BIM framework is, of course, a research effort. It has been used uh, in, in practice, but it, it is mainly a research effort. And it will achieve its goals by conducting more research with uh, academia and industry partners. And then making this, and it's very important, making this research uh, available for everyone and anyone who's interested. And the way we, we're going to make this uh, research available is through peer-reviewed papers, of course, for, for academia to, to build on, on top of that, and we build on top of other people's work, and to be presented through face-to-face -face presentations, and I've done quite a bit of that already. And this BIM framework video is part of, um, of a channel, a YouTube channel, which will include lots of videos covering um, the, the parts uh, of the BIM framework, which I'll explain in a second. And of course, we're going to be using social media and we have been using social media for a while. So to achieve also the goals, we, we, we need a, a very clear language and uh, we use a very clear uh, visual language here. Uh, and just as a note, when I, I say we, this is, uh, uh, the BIM framework is mostly an individual effort so far, but in the past years, many people have uh, you know, express interest in working together and we, we, when I use the word we, I refer to all our colleagues collectively who are working through the BIM framework, extending the BIM framework and using it to develop new templates, tools, etc. So, so when we, to achieve the goals, first we have to conduct the research and then we have to use, we have to use a very clear language. This language needs to be visual so people understand it um, quickly and 
accurately. That you'll notice uh, throughout these videos, and if you've read some of the papers, that uh, there is a very clear uh, use of, of visual language, which I hope uh, has helped some people understand um, the concepts and how they're related. Another way to achieve the, the, the goals is by developing, based on the framework, some intuitive tools, which currently there's a few of these, which will help facilitate competency-based learning. So we're focusing on learning, we're focus, of course, on BIM implementation and continuous performance improvement. So what is the BIM framework made of? So we heard the term BIM framework many times already in the past few minutes. So what, what's really a BIM framework and what is it is made of? So the BIM framework is made of a large number of smaller conceptual uh, components, smaller parts. So when we say a framework, really it is a combination of smaller parts. Each of this smaller part or component is intended to uh, clarify a single term. So you could have a, like a, a, a small term with a definition that's considered a framework part. Uh, the framework will also help to simplify a complex concept um, like, you know, uh, performance stages or maturity levels, etc. Identify workflow or, 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 or a set of steps, for example, for implementation, there's certain workflows to be adopted or certain steps to be followed. So the framework will, will include certain components which would help identify workflow or set of steps. And also, it will help to deliver a measurement or decision support tool. So, so we need tools to measure our performance or to, to measure uh, the reliability of a, of a document. Or, and also, the framework will, will deliver decision support tool to help, to help, for example, policy decision makers to make the right decisions when they're trying to implement them within uh, an organization or even across a market. So the framework will try to provide these decision support tools. In a sense, the, the MIM framework really is, is like a kit of parts. It's made of uh, multiple uh, small, simple units that can be added up uh, to build a larger and more complex one. And I'll, I'll show you in a, second what, in a second what I mean by these parts. So think of the framework as a collection of parts. And these parts start at, at the simplest form as a term, and uh, a term and a description. We call this a dictionary. Um, so any kind of term, for example, here you can see but in small text, a term called BIM facilitation, then there is a description together um, with other terms, they form a dictionary. The BIM framework includes lots of, uh, you know, terms. Currently, uh, all of these terms are collected under something called the BIM dictionary, which you can find on the uh, BIMdictionary.com. And in the BIM dictionary, you will find that these terms have, you, you know, attributes, uh, uh, it could be applicable to a certain country, etc. So I invite you to, to visit bimdictionary.com and have a look. The next level up in, in developing uh, these components is classification. So a cl classification is a collection of terms with a common concept, or so, so one concept and several terms behind it. So it's one level up. I'll give you an example. Uh, here we have something called the level of evidence. Um, classification, it's flat, so it's have a concept called evidence, and inside you have multiple uh, levels, so there's no branching, or um, so a classification is like a simple list made of a number of terms. The next level up is a taxonomy. A taxonomy is a collection of um, terms in hierarchical fashion, um, so there's some kind of branching. You can think like, uh, if you can think of a um, uh, mind map uh, with things branch. That's a kind of a taxonomy. Um, one example here is uh, the organizational hierarchy, um, which you know starts at the level with with a term, which branches into other terms. And I'll be covering um, the organizational hierarchy in a separate uh, video. And then uh, above taxonomy, um, we've got models. So models really benefit from all the, the below. So a, a model is a collection of taxonomies, classifications, and terms uh, shaped together to create uh, some kind of uh, knowledge model, which uh, combine concepts in order to either to clarify them or to, to, to make them 
um, do something. Later on, we'll see how, how that works. Um, so really, a model is a, is a combination of taxonomy, specifications, and terms. And here, here you, you see uh, the BIM fields uh, model. Um, oh, and you see here also the learning triangles model. So really, a model is a collection of these all these uh, uh, taxonomy specifications and terms. And above models, there's frameworks. Now, frameworks is a collection of models. So if you if you want, you, you think of frameworks as a collection of models, and uh, and the model is a, is a, is a, includes at least one taxonomy or classification, a number of terms, and uh, you can think of a taxonomy to include a classification, multiple classifications combined together in a hierarchy, and the classification includes a number of uh, terms for coming from a dictionary. So we call this um, um, this uh, um, strata of of knowledge levels uh, as a hierarchy, a, uh, a conceptual hierarchy. Now to connect all these together, so we've got all these terms and classifications and taxons and models. So if, if there's nothing connecting them, really we cannot benefit from them. So we cannot really uh, build um, taxonomies out of classifications or models out of taxonomies or frameworks out of models without something connecting them. And the BIM framework uses um, a conceptual glue, if you want, uh, which is called the BIM ontology. You don't need to worry about the BIM ontology too much, but just think about it as a, a kind of a very structured language that helps to connect uh, these um, conceptual parts together in order for them to work together. I'm going to be covering the BIM ontology in a separate uh, video in the future. And here in, in this image, you, you see something called the conceptual network, and, and this is really a, a, the number of, of models developed between 2005 up to 2013. There's more models developed by the BIM framework since then, but it gives you an idea about uh, the different parts. So for example, here in yellow, you can see um, the terms, uh, certain terms. So we hear the definition of BIM. Then here in red, you can see lots of classifications which is a very simple list. And then in purple, you see some of the taxonomies which look like hierarchies and, and things like that. And then we've got lots of models. And at the top, you have frameworks. And one of the most used frameworks is called the triaxial uh, framework, which includes lots of these models. And but also there are, are other frameworks uh, for competency assessment and improvement, etc. And out of all these, um, terms and classifications, taxonomies, models and frameworks that are at the bottom here, something called tools, which are not part of the conceptual hierarchy, but they are shown here to, to, to clarify how um, all these conceptual work end up being uh, used in tools, whether it's a, it's a template, like a decision support template to help a decision maker select the right action, or it's an online tool for assessment or it's an online learning module and i'll be covering some of uh, these tools in the future as well hopefully uh, this video has uh, shown a, a bit uh, explained a bit uh, the bim framework and how it's made of all these different parts or what are its goals some of its uh, origins but hopefully in the future a number of uh, videos covering specific models will help explain the overall uh, framework Thank you.